Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Victor Siura, uh, and I'm a senior software engineer uh, at Cafion, working on the advanced installer team. I've been working on advanced installer for over a decade now, and currently I spend most of my time working with my team on improving the repackaging and virtualization capabilities in advanced installer, helping our clients migrate their Win32 desktop applications to the modern application model of the Windows Store, that is UWP Apex packages. <clears throat> to give you a bit of a context uh, about uh, the project I work on, uh, Advanced Installer is, a, uh, is an IDE, it's a Windows installer authoring tool that helps developers and IT pros create MSI, EXE, AppV, AppV packages and Apex packages. It's a 14-year-old code base under active development, about two and a half million lines of C++ code, 130 Visual Studio projects that include executables, DLLs, <coughs> static libs. We built everything with Visual Studio 2017. We do about a monthly release cycle on three-week sprints. We do Windows-only deployment, and we have strong Windows SDK dependencies as our code base has a fairly wide uh, API surface area due to our application domain, of course. Why am I here? Well, I googled this uh, phrase uh, a few days back to check my spelling and uh, found myself looking at some really disturbing quotes. <laughs> I see some of you reaching for your phones, please don't do that. <laughs> Cannot compete with this. <laughs> I mean, why am I here at CVPCon giving this talk? Well, uh, our, our experience in adopting Clang tools in a traditionally Windows-only development environment, we've been in Visual Studio world for all our professional lives, has been a very positive experience for my team. And we are here to share some of our experiences in this journey of trying to adopt Clang tools, especially Clang Tidy, and the story uh, I'm about to tell is about the struggles to get here, as well as the benefits we uh, encountered and the large-scale refactorings we were able to perform with Clank Tidy once we set up everything. Just a bit of a disclaimer. <clears throat> this talk is not about Clank versus Visual Studio. I see some Microsoft people in the room. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're a Windows-only development team, and we're going to continue being this way, and we're going to continue using both Visual Studio and Clang tools on the side to modernize, refactor, and overall improve our code quality. A bit of a timeline. I think uh, in this kind of talk, uh, a case study kind of talk, a um, very important thing is to realize the time scale. Uh, in order to share the travel and the experience with you, and make sure you know what you're embarking on if you would like to try something similar. It all started a year ago here at CPPCon with a birds of a feather session on Clang format. Uh, about that time, we were thinking about adopting Clang format for our uh, workflow. And this session at CPPCon last year uh, gave us the right motivation and experience sharing with other people here to try to tackle this on, and we achieved this at the end of last year. And it culminated with a big reformat and uh, SCM push, after endless debates on styles and <laughs> configs, of course. And our current workflow is basically using Clank format via Visual Studio extension with auto format on save. That's a free extension on uh, Windows Marketplace. Our goals was Building on the success of Clang format, we gained courage to experiment with Clang Tidy. But this is not a straight through uh, proposition, because using Clang format uh, doesn't require you to be able to compile uh, your code base with Clang. It just needs to be able to uh, lex it, tokenize it. So embarking on, Clank, on a Clang Tidy trip required that Clang was able to compile our Windows uh, code base that compiled fine with uh, Visual Studio, of course. Uh, just a note, we were already on 
uh, high warning levels, W4 and WX for our projects. So uh, we were in pretty good shape already in terms of uh, warnings and conformance. But we did encounter quite a few non-standard C++ language extensions that if you can, people will use them. <laughs> and uh, there was quite a bit of, of those and we tried to fix them and achieve cross-compiler compatibility with Clang. Of course, we intend to, intend to perf perform large-scale refactorings with modernized modules and readability modules from Clang Tidy. And we did all that and also ran code analysis uh, to find subtle bugs and uh, fix them. Just to give you a few examples uh, of stuff we encountered. Uh, Non-virtual destructor calls, uh, overload function hiding uh, base class uh, methods, uh, incorrect ordering of member initializer lists, uh, pessimizing moves, and missing field initializers, just to name a few. A lot more, <laughs> a lot more. A frequent offender, double uh, user-defined uh, conversions. We had quite a few of those, especially uh, for strings and um, string literals. And we had quite a few of those and we had to fix each and every one. Coming back to the timeline, we started playing with Clang on Windows with LLVM 3.9 in January this year. First commits, fixing, like I said, warnings and errors. Uh, and to help with that, we created a crude automation attempt with some uh, batch files. Uh, I'll just show you one a little later to see how simple and naive that was. And uh, after a, a month on this workflow, we needed to upgrade to something more powerful. Uh, and we implemented the PowerShell script to help with this uh, build and fixing workflow. In March, our PowerShell script gained the ability to run client tidy checks as well. Um, and we did the first experiments on our source code on some core libraries. In April, after only three months, we were able to compile our whole code base with Clang 3.9 with some default warnings disabled, <laughs> to be fair. And immediately after that, to prevent uh, further breakage, we integrated uh, Clang build into our uh, workflow by creating a Jenkins job to build ev basically every SEM <coughs> change in our code base. Later on, we did several improvements to our PowerShell automation script, like uh, support for pcompile headers, parallel compilation, project filters, SDK versioning, and so on. And over the summer, we continued experiments with Clang Tidy on our source code with better coverage. And it's important to mention that uh, at that time, we also upgraded from, from Visual Studio 2015 to 2017. And this is relevant for Clang because we also needed to update our uh, Clang compilation scripts. We started work on a custom-based refactoring tool based on lib tooling. And that helped us tremendously as well uh, during this uh, code rejuvenation. And we fixed Clang 4.0 issues and upgraded in July to Clang 4.0. Next, we got a little courageous and started tackling W all warnings in Clang, quite a few of those. <laughs> and we've made extensive, extensive code transformations with our uh, custom lib tooling helpers. Finally, in August, our whole code base compiles with Clang W all. And again, we got a little courageous and started embarking on W extra. We're still not there, but it's work in progress. And we started developing a Visual Studio extension that we named Clang Power Tools to help developers with this workflow. And over the summer, we did uh, large-scale refactorings with Clang Tidy using modernized uh, modules, uh, readability modules from Clang Tidy. And we did huge code transformations with these modules. Of course, every change needed to be 
thoroughly inspected and tested. There were some problems uh, with some of the modules, uh, but overall it was a very, uh, very positive experience that I encourage you all to take. So um, in September we finally upgraded to LLVM 5.0 and fixed a little bit more warnings coming from that. Uh, basically, most of them were uh, Lambda capture warnings. And we open sourced our Visual Studio extension and our PowerShell scripts uh, on GitHub. Uh, in September, we also published the extension to Visual Studio Marketplace, and it's a free extension you can try out for yourselves. And here we are. Some of the transformations we performed uh, on our code base with Tidy, uh, use null putter, loop conversions, for basically uh, modernizing loops to range for loops. Uh, use override, that was a very beneficial uh, modernization. Um, redundant string uh, uh, sitter, uh, use and place, auto, make shared, make unique, um, equals default, that was a big one, and equals delete. Um, default member initializing, passing by value, brace initialization, uh, using instead of type defs, um, CPP core guidelines, um, readability improvements, and some string optimizations. A lot of effort was um, involved in examining reports from the static analysis tool in Clang Tidy and fixing uh, some of the bugs we encountered. There were some false positives, of course, as it's expected with these kinds of tools. And uh, also examining CPP core guidelines um, reports as well. How did we achieve all that? Using tools, of course. Like I said, our PowerShell scripts, um, our custom lib tooling implementations, and our Visual Studio extension. Uh, I'm up here, but I have to give a shout out to some of my teammates that helped tremendously in this effort. Uh, for uh, developing, developing our uh, PowerShell scripts. I have my uh, PowerShell uh, wizard there, uh, Gabriel, uh, and our Visual Studio extension, <coughs> as well as our custom tools built on libtooling. And many, many other uh, teammates that helped fixing errors and warnings in our source code. It was a, really a big effort. Simple beginnings. <laughs> as you can see, this is how we started in at the beginning of this year with some simple batch files, uh, very naive. We quickly uh, came to some of the limitations on this approach. But you've got to start somewhere. And this is how we started. As you can see, it's not very fancy. After about a month of struggling with uh, batch files and uh, uh, fixing issues that way, my colleague Gabriel helped me with uh, a PowerShell script that we developed since then. It's much more complicated. I cannot fit that on the slide. <clears throat> over a thousand lines, very configurable. Over time, we added many knobs and switches to this script and supports both Clang compile, syntax only, of course, and tidy workflows. Uh, works directly on Visual Studio projects. There is no round tripping in converting projects to Clang compilation JSON database or anything like that. It works directly on the Visual Studio projects or MS Build projects, for that matter. It supports parallel compilation. That is a, a big uh, positive uh, fact, because uh, otherwise it would take forever. When we started, it used to be able to run overnight, and that's it, because um, it's a fairly large code base. Uh, <clears throat> it constructs Clang PCH files from uh, Visual Studio uh, standard uh, FX uh, files and automatically extracts uh, all the required settings from Visual Studio projects like preprocessor definitions, additional include directories, SDK versions, um, PCH information, uh, debug information, and so on. Um, to give you a bit of a flavor on using the, um, the script, some of the switches are up there. I'm not going to go over every each and every one of those. Just to tell you that <coughs> our main script uh, has too many knobs, so to speak. It's very powerful. So we developed what we call a bootstrapper script. 
that uh, you can copy and customize. We give you an example. You can copy and customize to be able to more easily use uh, this approach in your workflow by specifying compilation constants, constants in this uh, bootstrapper script and be able to run with much fewer command line parameters when running. For example, you have here a sample uh, partial script and you give it the project, uh, projects foo and bar and we, you, tell the, you tell it to compile every source file that matches meow uh, and uh, apply tight clank tidy fixes uh, in the category of uh, modernized, basically all modernized models. Uh, this is standard clank tidy syntax. And for a simpler workflow, you can just tell it to parallel compile uh, every project in a current directory, ignoring projects foo and bar. Just a few examples. <coughs> How would uh, this kind of a script look like? Well, something like this. You can uh, define constants, constants that are specific to your project needs or for your team, like uh, your perfect combination of clank flags that you need. Your mileage may vary. Uh, not everybody can use the same uh, configuration flags, of course. Additional specific include directories, Visual Studio versioning information, and so on. And as soon as we able to compile everything with Clang, we needed to make sure it doesn't break going forward. And as I told you, we had to immediately integrate this in our workflow. And we've been using Jenkins continuous integration. And the perfect combination for using this uh, PowerShell script, we think, is uh, integrating in CI. And to give you an example using Jenkins, <coughs> basically, you have to install and configure a Jenkins PowerShell plugin, if that's not already on your box, and add a build step or create a completely new job for Clang using a Windows PowerShell script uh, task. And this is how it would, it would look, for example. This is invoking our uh, Bootstrapper's PowerShell script to run in parallel. And we have one ignore project that's a third party project that we cannot make it compile with Clang, for example. This is a simple uh, Jenkins CI integration for running uh, your PowerShell scripts with Clang. And our recommendation is that you basically pull SEM and build every SEM change with Clang to make sure it doesn't break and fix issues as soon as they appear, once you achieve compatibility, of course. The best part about this is, of course, when a Clang build is broken, we have a Slack bot for Jenkins, and we're immediately notified, and the person responsible will fix it as soon as it as soon as physically possible. <laughs> uh, email, email notification is another option. Receiving a build failure with the reports and change set, and of course with a Clang error that needs to be addressed. What about developer workflow? Where? Well, for a developer workflow, uh, of course, you can use Power, the PowerShell script, and we've been using that at the very beginning. Uh, but that's much more tedious, and we think a much, much better approach is uh, using a Visual Studio extension, because we're living in Visual Studio, and that's the most appropriate way to deal with these things. So we think the best approach is uh, integration right in the IDE. And we started developing this Visual Studio extension that we're offering for free. And we also open sourced. <coughs> Our Visual Studio extension basically is based on our PowerShell script. But it will rely uh, less and less on, uh, on this script as we move forward. This is just our first uh, draft. Uh, the extension is available in the Visual Studio Marketplace. You can just search for it, just search Clang, and you'll find Clang Power Tools. Install it, and configure it. Uh, we expose some of the knobs 
uh, of uh, our automation uh, for Clang Tidy and Clang Compile. For example, uh, Clang compilation flags that you can configure. Um, you can configure the behavior of the compilation uh, as well as uh, configure um, Clang Tidy checks. For example, you have a full list of supported Clang Tidy checks that you can run and you can toggle them uh, whenever you need. Uh, there is also uh, inline documentation for switches that we pulled off uh, uh, from the web. So we can basically have the whole experience right there in the IDE and see uh, what modules are you running and uh, you can run repeated workflows on the same settings because there are, these settings are persisted, of course, in, uh, in your uh, IDE. So, for example, you can uh, tell it to auto-fix issues that Clang finds uh, and automatically fix them and reloads in your uh, IDE environment. Uh, <coughs> you can configure individual uh, Clang ID checks or modules, or you can even give, give it a wildcard check. For example, you want to run all modernized modules or all readability modules. You can also do that. How it would look like? Well, if you install this ex extension, you will, you will find it in the contextual place you would expect. Uh, for example, you can run it for a project or for a solution. You can run I either compile, uh, just syntax only, only. We're not emitting any uh, object file or intermediate representation. We don't need that. Basically, compilations, the compilation step is just needed to make sure you have compatibility and you are able to run tidy. So <clears throat> you can compile or tidy a whole project or your whole solution or just a single file, for example, your current editor file, or um, you can compile several projects. For example, you encounter, for, let's say you uh, receive a um, broken build report from uh, Jenkins and you just jump into Visual Studio, go to that sp uh, file that uh, is broken and just fix that. You can select multiple files, of course. How it looks like, we integrate with the standard output uh, window of Visual Studio. That's where you're gonna see uh, compilation errors and warnings, um, as well as the error tab uh, in Visual Studio. It's navigable, so it will jump to the right location in the source code, exactly as you would expect from a Visual Studio warning or error. And uh, has, of course, all the standard output that you would, and diagnostics that you would expect from a Clang uh, compiler uh, and Clang tidy. For example, for the Clidy uh, workflow, you can see here uh, a Clang, uh, Clang tidy analyze report. Uh, and this one is for uh, null dereference, for example. Okay. Where can you get it? Well, uh, the Visual Studio extension is, like I said, in the Visual Studio Marketplace. You can get it right now. It relies on LLVM for Windows, so it's not standalone. You need to have inst installed LLVM on your box. There is a standard distribution for Windows. Don't worry, you don't have to build it from source. <laughs> There's a Windows installer kit. So uh, it works with uh, Clang 3.9, 4.0, 5.0. 4 it works with Visual Studio 2017 uh, right now, but uh, we're soon gonna add support for 2015, and if somebody is still on, on that version, of course. You can find all the source code on GitHub, um, as well as for the extension itself and uh, for the PowerShell scripts that we provide. And going forward, we're thinking big beyond Clang Tidy. Uh, as I said, we wrote custom tools to, that are project specific to meet our refactoring needs. We have quite a few of, uh, of those and we're still developing on them. Uh, we fixed hundreds of member initializers uh, lists with wrong order. That was a big uh, milestone. 
to achieve uh, WOL compatibility. We removed a lot of class private fields that were unused, like references, pointers, and others, other scalar types. Uh, we refactored some heavily used uh, class constructors. We changed uh, some of our mechanisms for acquiring dependencies between us, uh, our models. And that was quite a large code transformation that we wouldn't have been able to perform with just uh, grep replace or stuff like that. So uh, we actually built a custom tool for uh, doing those refactorings. And we have even more on the way. Uh, we think we unlocked uh, a big potential here for code transformations. I think the biggest challenge was uh, getting here. So achieving cross-compiler compatibility was the, the, the biggest challenge. Once we achieved that, we unlocked a tremendous uh, horizon for uh, what we can do in terms of tooling. Uh, once we, we were able to run tidy and run our custom uh, lib tooling uh, checks on our source code, Basically, uh, you're just limited by your imagination. You can do any code transformation, you can do uh, function deprecation, you can easily change uh, arguments and deprecate uh, source code and modernize your application and have full control over what happens at scale. We're talking about min millions of lines of code here and some of the transformations are not trivial. You can get away with grep replace any, all the time. So <clears throat> for our roadmap, uh, we're working on W extra. Um, there, there were a lot of issues with this, uh, with this set of flags. Uh, we have a few remaining issues to fix. Uh, we plan to continuously improve the Clank Power Tools Visual Studio extension and uh, run even more Clang tidy checks, uh, fix more issues with Clang Analyzer. This is a, a tremendous source of uh, information. Some of the reports were really eye-opening for us. Um, just to uh, make a clarification, we did run, uh, um, also run uh, Visual Studio Static analyz Analyzer and, for example, uh, Visual Studio CPP Core guidelines checks. Uh, I think we can get the best of both worlds. It's not that one tool is better than the other. They just complement each other very well. So uh, there's never too many tools you can run or too many reports you can uh, see and too many bugs to fix. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna continue using uh, both. Um, we're gonna rerun previous checks on new code. So this is an important issue of uh, developing a workflow around Clang Tidy. As, uh, once we ran our initial transformations er, and our initials, uh, initial fixes, uh, we need to be able to develop a workflow going forward. How are we gonna use this in our day-to-day -day activity? How frequently are, are we going to run Tidy checks? So we're still figuring this out and experimenting with different workflows. Of course, in order to be able to achieve this, we need to be able to compile our whole code base on each commit, on each revision with uh, Clang. So this is a very important issue. We, we don't need to, any regression on this part. So uh, the biggest effort going forward is investing more in lib tooling and our custom checks. Some of them are general purpose and we intend to uh, make them uh, open source and available for others to try out. Some of them are very specific. I think most of them uh, you can categorize as project specific and we're gonna develop even more, more of those. Okay, um, I didn't want to uh, go too long with um, uh, what I prepared because I, this kind of um, case study and presentation uh, implies uh, questions on your parts, and I just want to be able to give you ample time in uh, uh, asking me uh, questions or getting a, an opinion. If you can line up to, to the mics and 
start asking questions. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, how do we avoid uh, warnings from Clang Tidy or so in third party headers that you include and that are like pulled into the analysis by Clang Tidy? Yeah, that's a difficult issue. <laughs> because iSystem doesn't work on Windows. I yeah. Mean. yeah, that's a difficult issue. You, you basically you have to try to isolate those. So you have you can uh, our scripts and uh, extension can ignore specific translation units, for example. But in terms of headers, uh, you may, you basically need to do the required refactorings to minimize the impact of third-party headers that generate uh, tidy reports or analysis reports to be able to carve out and ignore as a very small portion of, of your code as you can. Uh, we don't have a perfect solution in this regard in terms of headers. Yeah, you just have to basically try to isolate the impact of that header on on a very small piece of your code to to be able to ignore. Yeah. We don't have a solution for uh, headers. Basically, with with tidy, you have a transitive include of all with, uh, of your all your your source code dependencies and it's difficult to turn off uh, errors and warnings that come from headers. Another observation I need to make on this uh, aspect is with regards to auto fixes. For example, uh, when you apply a tidy fix uh, on, some source, uh, on some source code, for example, for, on some CPP files, uh, it will also fix uh, included headers uh, that that translation unit pulls. So this is uh, something that uh, we encountered when we, we tried to parallelize uh, Clang Tidy uh, modernizations. Uh, we couldn't do that because uh, when running in parallel on multiple uh, CPP files, they reference the same headers and they basically try to write over each other and corrupted those headers. So uh, Clang Tidy auto fix in parallel, again, that's something we cannot do, again, uh, because of the uh, transitive nature of uh, headers included from multiple CPP files. So headers are, are a difficult issue. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi, um, I actually have two things I wanna say. Um, yeah. First, like a little background, like I actually work on Clang for Windows. Um, cool. And when I first read the, the abstract of the talk, I saw that you mentioned all these PowerShell scripts, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna come in here and tell him that we already have a, a Visual Studio extension for Clang Tidy, but it's just not on the marketplace. And so I was gonna say, like, maybe you could improve our extension and get it on the marketplace, but it turns out yours is actually much better than the one that I had developed. Um, and so I think on behalf of the other Clang for Windows developers who are in this room, um, I just wanna say thank you, because it's really awesome. Um, You're welcome. So the other, the other thing I wanna say, which is actually a question, is that I saw in your configuration options dialog, mm -hmm. um, you had the compiler options. Mm -hmm. And so it looks to me like you're using probably the GCC driver and like you're just calling clang.exe, is that right? Clang plus plus dot yeah. yeah, so is there any reason or have you considered using clangcl.exe because then you can actually, you don't have to pass any extra compiler options. You can, you can just pull the MSVC compiler options from the project file and just use it. Ooh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we did try that, but uh, on, uh, on, in the end, we we just wanted to have uh, full control over over the uh, compilation flags and be able to experiment with different uh, compilation settings. So, the reason we took this route is because we wanted to keep control, basically. Yeah, that's an option we we are still looking at. Okay. But we prefer this route uh, because we wanted to be able to uh, very fine uh, tune the um, compilation settings and be able to experiment with, like I said, with. Um, w extra, and um, we even tried some warnings that are not in W extra, but yeah. we consider that they're useful. So we want it to be as um, generic as possible and not use any magic. <laughs> so, okay. so to speak, yeah. In terms of um, the extension, um, I. I'm not sure exactly what's the best approach here. Maybe a unifying approach of 
contributing to a single extension and making that available in the Visual Studio Marketplace, maybe that would be a better approach. Yeah, I'll probably just delete mine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Maybe maybe we can uh, combine and get b best of both worlds. So uh, we think it's important to get it out there. That's why we, op we open source it. Uh, we welcome extensions from anybody who can contribute. Uh, but we think it's important to be visible. People, when they're going to search for this kind of extension from, visual, from within Visual Studio, Extension Manager, they need to be able to find this and be able to run as quickly as possible. Yeah. So we're going to continue to invest in this. And I think uh, we can benefit from uh, many people's ideas. So your ideas are welcome. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm and I'm on the other end. I'm, I'm like you. I looked at uh, Clang Tidy about three years ago before it was available on Windows. And I've, I've got a code base that's much bigger than yours. And, it, yeah. and anyway, I did not succeed. So thank you for pushing this through. Uh, yeah, this, this looks fascinating. We didn't think we were going to succeed either. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so it, does the extension go to the VCX proj file and go pull in all of the current uh, flags and so forth and, and translate it right at, at in real time there? Yeah, it's there's, not... There's a JSON file that has to get generated, right? No. Uh, I alluded to this earlier. Uh, maybe I went too fast. Um, we're actually not doing any round tripping in converting your Visual Studio v VCH uh, project file into a, com a JSON uh, plan compilation database. We're not doing that. We're actually working directly on uh, uh, MS build configuration file on your Visual Studio project file directly. We're actually, uh, the script actually pulls information from that uh, project file directly. Uh, some, of, uh, some, some of the required information needs extracted from there. For example, um, SDK versioning, uh, target platform, uh, additional include directories, uh, PCH information, Unicode information, mm -hmm. uh, um, preprocessor information, and stuff like that. Uh, still a lot, a lot more to do in this area. More information can be automatically extracted from there. And we can do more in mapping uh, specific Visual Studio uh, compilation settings to Clang settings. Some of those right now are just knobs that you have to figure out how to uh, configure. Uh, we did quite a few of effort in this part. We're lots more to go. Right now, our Visual Studio extension actually relies on this PowerShell script. It, it has it in the, in the box, so to speak. Uh, going forward, we plan to rely less and less on this PowerShell script and leverage some of the integrated um, SDK that uh, a Visual Studio extension has to be able to extract more information from the project and from the current editor context. For example, we're thinking about even integrating in the editor with uh, IntelliSense-like features or uh, mm -hmm. more, more code navigation uh, stuff or uh, more uh, on the lines of auto fixes for Tidy. So right now, we are heavily dependent on the PowerShell script because we started that way when we thought the best way to achieve uh, publications with this extension is to just leverage the script we already had because we started with the script. And we continue to consider that uh, continuous integration is very, a very important aspect of this. So we're not going to uh, deprecate the script whilst, uh, once we improve the extension. So the script is going to improve as well. But the extension itself will rely less and less on the script file actually pulling information from the VCX project file. And it's going to figure out lots of the settings from the environment itself mm -hmm. with okay. using the Visual Studio SDK. And, and one more quick thing. It, a couple of years ago, when I looked at Clang Tidy, there were like three levels of transformation. There was a totally safe, something that might break the code, something that probably yeah, that, would break the code. Is that in the, uh, in the options? That, uh, that depends on the um, uh, check you select. Not all the checks are configurable. Some of the checks are configurable. For example, uh, um, uh, loop convert with range four loops. That does have the exact mm -hmm. same labels you mentioned, yeah. like safe, unsafe, and uh, experimental or something. Yeah. Uh, it, this is something we're not currently exposing right now. Uh, we basically run with a checks default option. So, I, I'm but just we wondering, do plan to expose that. I'm just wondering what what your experience was on your code base in terms of errors generated when you did some of the more uh, more aggressive uh, uh, transformations. Yeah, <laughs> um, good good ones and bad ones. Uh, I can give you a few examples. I, I didn't I didn't want to pick on Clang Tidy, so this uh, was mostly a talk about uh, experience, a case study, and didn't want to show bugs or issues. So, but we encountered quite a few of those. For example, uh, the loop con convert uh, tidy check was quite a a good one and a decent citizen. 
we did the default checks. Uh, we also did uh, some of the uh, unsafe uh, transformations, and uh, it was pretty good. The result was pretty good. Uh, very, very few issues. Uh, for example, other extensions are not very, uh, uh, not very safe to run. Uh, for example, uh, use using was a particular mm -hmm. check in Clang Tidy that caused lots of trouble for us. Uh, first of all, it didn't catch uh, all the type defs that it's supposed to catch, and it messed around with some of our function pointer definitions using type defs. Uh, we had some issues there in terms of uh, we were using uh, custom calling conventions like uh, standard call, and the, basically the function uh, pointer syntax just screwed up the <laughs> that uh, tidy check. So we had some issues. Some of the checks were very nice, and we didn't have basically any problem. It generated huge diffs, huge diffs in our code base, but basically were just mechanical replacements or very clever replacements that uh, were basically zero errors, zero problems that we detected. Mm -hmm. Some of them are tricky. For example, removing redundant C underscore uh, str from uh, uh, W string, uh, some of them were tricky. In some places, people relied on a null terminated string being passed in, so uh, we needed to be very careful in removing those. So um, overall, the experience were, was very nice, but you need to be very careful and your mileage might vary, so it, it's very tricky. And you need, to be, you need to examine each and every change very carefully before you push it in. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Yeah, his question touched on what I was going to ask, which is, how did you go about validating the uh, changes that Tidy made to ensure uh, that they weren't <clears throat> breaking something subtle? Lot how was your regression test coverage and such? Uh, basically, you have to be very careful. And uh, of course, you rely on uh, unit tests. That's very important. Um, some of the transformations were just plain breaking the, uh, breaking the build. So that were immediately spotted. Yeah. But uh, some of the stuff was silent. Like I said uh, uh, in, that, in the example with uh, wsting c underscore str, uh, we found some, some of those um, <coughs> just by uh, examining the, the diff. So you basically, you're doing large scale code transformation, and that uh, spares you the time of actually doing it yourself. But uh, that doesn't preclude the fact that you need to analyze the results carefully before you push them in. So you cannot blindly just trust the tool that it will make the things right and just commit everything as it is. So we actually did careful examination line by line for each diff that uh, the tool generated. So, and of course, rely on your unit tests. Uh, but it depends on how good your coverage is. So <laughs> you just need to be very careful. You, uh, it's a very powerful tool, but you don't have to trust it. <laughs> right. Would, would you say you have good test coverage? You're pretty happy uh, with your Yeah, coverage? but you're never Well, well you're never covered. fully satisfied. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And how long does your system take to build? Sorry? How long does your system take to build? Uh, on Clang or on Visual Studio? Uh, Visual Studio. On Visual Studio, uh, debug build is about um, 40 minutes. Uh, release build, about an hour. Okay. Yeah. And on Clang, uh, about 45 minutes. But on Clang, we just uh, use F syntax only. So right. we're just parsing it. That's it. About 45 minutes on, uh, in parallel. Uh, our Clang script basically saturates all the cores. So uh, that is uh, another issue that we need to address uh, in continuous integration uh, scenarios. We, we did um, priority queues for uh, Jenkins jobs because when a Clang uh, build uh, triggered, it basically saturated all the cores or on our build machines and other jobs were not able to perform as well. So um, uh, Clang build runs pretty f as fast as it can. <laughs> so it basically saturates your machine. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you very much for the tool. I just can't wait to, to try it out on our projects. It's really awesome. Uh, you, uh, all this awesomeness is available when you actually uh, make your code compilable under Clang, right? Mm -hmm. So as I said, it took uh, quite a lot of effort to actually make it mm -hmm. compilable. Yes. And before you make it, you cannot use Clang tools to help you transform the code. It's a catch-22, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. So uh, uh, maybe there are some tricks that you use to actually make, uh, to, to, uh, to help yourself to make yes. this code compilable. Yes. Which are those? It's a it's a multiple phase uh, process. So uh, first of all, <coughs> uh, you must be able to compile uh, your source code uh, to be able to run tidy. But 
you don't have to be able to compile it with all the switches on. You can disable a <coughs> lot of warnings initially. And the, basically, the Clank Tidy is able to work as soon as you don't have any errors. We actually mm. have a switch that treats uh, warning, Clank warnings as errors, but you don't have to do it right away. So you can disable large, a large amount of uh, warnings initially to be able to just make it compile uh, with uh, Microsoft compatibility uh, switches. Uh, you just have to make it compile without errors. That's the first step. W without that, you cannot run Tidy. But uh, after you do that, you can run uh, tidy uh, mo modernizations and even lib tooling uh, stuff that you develop to make it work. And we actually did that. For example, uh, uh, member initializer list reordering. That was a very sensitive issue that we act we actually couldn't perform by hand because it's very difficult to uh, check the right order uh, where classes had tens of members. So doing that over millions of lines of code, it's basically impossible. So we actually did that with our uh, with a custom developed lib tooling uh, tool that we developed. So uh, before achieving uh, tidy compilation without errors, basically you just have to rely on um, transformations that you do by hand or with grep-like replaces or uh, it's a catch-22 problem, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, but it's a multiple phase uh, process, so you do modernizations and you were able to flip even more clank switches. You, you enable warnings that you initially disabled, mm -hmm. do more fixes with tidy and lib tooling, enable more warnings. So right. it's a multi-stage approach. So Yeah, just, just need to start. Another question, you mentioned that there is an uh, extension clank format, right? Yeah, Can that's you, not uh, ours, right, but so we use it. Uh, so the question is, uh, does your extension actually supersede this clank format extension? Uh, no, but uh, we um, version 1.0 of our Clank Power Tools extension doesn't call format, but this is the first thing we're going to implement in next in the, our next version is calling automatically calling Clank format after we tidy with autofix. So after because we actually do, did that in our scripting uh, scenarios, we actually did. Uh, Tidy transformations, and right after that, we did we did uh, Clank format uh, on those transformations too, because those transformations uh, don't format the code like you would ex expect. So mm. they they do surgical replaces, so to speak. So mm. you need to rerun Clank format. So uh, not in version 1.0, but in version 1.1, <laughs> let's let's say uh, this our extension will supersede Clank format. Basically, you. Uh, for tidy scenarios, uh, for your day-to-day uh, -day editing scenarios, I think you would be better off using the Clank format extension. They can live side by side. I actually have both of them installed on, on, on my uh, box. So, uh, for day-to-day -day editing, I think uh, the experience in uh, Clank format extension that's already for a year in the Visual Studio Marketplace. That's very good and very, uh, very simple workflow. We actually use auto format on save and everything. It's great. But for tidy scenarios, our extension will provide the format for you, if you'd like. Mm -hmm. And it will pick up your uh, configured style or whatever you have in your project. Thanks. Yes, my question is about um, you give us your timeline. Mm -hmm. And there was multiple people involved. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of workload, like. Was it full time for some of them? Was it? That's a very good question. I, I wanted to mention that and I forgot. Uh, it started as a hobby project for me, <laughs> and uh, very soon after that, uh, um, a colleague decided to help with the uh, PowerShell uh, scripts. And as soon as we got the ball rolling, more people pitched in to help. It was to a totally uh, a twenty percent effort, so to speak. So it it wasn't a goal for us. Uh, it was something we, uh, we we would like to see, and basically we just uh, convinced people to come help. So they they saw what we were doing, they saw the uh, commits and the changes. They said, mm -hmm, "Interesting, you fixed that. Why did you fix that?" Uh, I explained the warning or the issue that we encountered, and uh, <coughs> we picked their interest and they pitched in to help. It was not something we decided to work full time. Uh, we did this as we worked on features for our commercial product. So uh, we did this work. Another important aspect is uh, we did this work on our trunk. 
So we didn't sp uh, split a branch that we fixed issues on and synced with our production uh, environment. That would have been a total, total failure, in my opinion, because they would have quickly <coughs> gone out of sync and people would stop, would ignore that branch and the build would continuously be broken. I cannot fix all the issues myself. So, <laughs> so we did this live as we worked on developing features for production. So a few people helped. <laughs> I, I, it's not one, a one-man job. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, yes, my question is, um, I was wondering if you have any metrics that would prove that all the effort that you put in was worthwhile at the end. Um, one metric I can give you, uh, my colleagues are very happy <laughs> with the code transformation. I, I, uh, it's, I think it's a good metric. Uh, it's not something in terms of uh, return of investment or something like that, but if people are happy, and they like the result, they like looking at modern code. Uh, if you don't have any contention and debates about uh, the review process on those <coughs> changes, people rarely had any objections on the transformation we, we were able to perform with Tidy. So uh, if people don't have any issues with the diffs in, in themselves and they're happy with the result and they pitched in voluntarily to help with this process, I think that's a very good metric. <laughs> Was that your original plan that you just wanted to run it so the code looked better or were you running it to fix bugs that you didn't know you uh, it had? It was a, a multi-pronged approach. So we, we basically wanted both. We wanted to modernize our code base as well as run uh, analysis. I was very impressed with uh, other talks I saw about using analysis on code bases and finding bugs. And uh, we did experiment with uh, Visual Studio Static analyz Analyzer and we were happy with that. And uh, we were interested in running more CPP core guideline checks uh, in Tidy, so it, it, we had many goals, but it wasn't something that we scheduled. It's something that happened as we, we started, like you saw, we started with the batch files, we started fixing errors, people, people got interested, uh, we were reading up on the reports and studying the, the subtle issues. So, Do you have any gut feeling for whether you think the code is more stable? Uh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say it's more stable. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> uh, we had issues. Like I said, we uncovered uh, issues. Some of them we caught uh, before we committed. Some of them we caught in testing. And uh, I'm not gonna pretend this will improve your code. Maybe this process will also add some bugs. <laughs> yeah, we have to be very careful. But overall, we're very happy with what we did, and we don't have any regrets, and we're going to continue doing it. So, okay, so. thank you. At the scale that you're working millions of lines of code, it, that seems pretty big for Visual Studio. I was just wondering if you could talk about your experience uh, uh, with that. We don't have any issues on, on that uh, scale. We don't have all the projects in a single solution, if that's what you're referring to. We have several, several solutions. Um, I think our biggest solution has about 40 projects in it, but we have many solutions. We have about 134 uh, projects uh, overall. Uh, we don't have any issues with the IDE itself uh, on this scale. We're, we're happy with it. Uh, especially in uh, the latest version of Visual Studio, 15.3 with a lightweight solution loader. It actually loads very fast, uh, even if you have m many projects in one solution. So on that front, we're happy with it. Thanks. Hi, you said that you were doing all the work on your trunk. Mm -hmm. Did you have any other branches active at the time? And did you have any issues merging? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was hoping to avoid that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like any, like, like any refactoring you're gonna do, you're gonna have issues with uh, active branches uh, when mm -hmm. merging. So yes, we, we had issues when we actually fixed some stuff and uh, some teammates reintegrated the branch and we had to, basically they had, um, they had um, mergers and they solved them by, they solved them by uh, using their version. So we had to reapply and we think it's the right approach because uh, they cannot redo their work, but we can rerun our tools. So mm. the right approach in resolving merge conflicts would be uh, accept the changes that are uh, actual code changes <laughs> that people do when integrating it and rerunning your tools because uh, rerunning tools is easy. 
uh, making a developer uh, uh, rewrite its code, it's not a, something you can expect. So we did have several issues like that. But we basically reran our scripts, so everything worked out. Oh, very good. Another question I had, what was the most surprising bug or error that you saw after running something that you thought would be fairly safe? Use using. <laughs> use using seems like a very trivial thing to modernize. And, sorry? It seems like trivial, but it messed up our whole code base. <laughs> yeah, uh, didn't pick up all the type defs, uh, messed up our function pointer definitions, um, had issues in um, type defs inside template functions where it actually replaced, when it replaced the type def with using, it actually replaced with a concrete type of that uh, template instantiation instead of maintaining the template parameter. Uh, it, I think it's the most buggy check <laughs> in tidy. Uh, not yet. Yeah, we're gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, in, uh, actually, in uh, at least on Windows, in three point no, in Clang four point zero, it actually uh, crashed uh, this tidy. So in five point zero, it works, but we had several issues, and it was surprising because you asked about the surprising scenario. I thought that would be a trivial transformation, <laughs> use using, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for the talk uh, and uh, for the courage of, you know, expressing it and bringing it. Uh, the question is, oh, your code, when you build it for production, uh, what, what uh, compiler do you use? Uh, Visual Studio 2017. Okay. 15.3 right now. Okay. Yeah. So if, even 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 though you you are using the uh, latest Visual Studio, I mean, yeah, okay. it's uh, yeah yeah it's it's fifteen dot three is the latest Visual Studio version. Visual Studio two thousand seventeen. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. It's okay. version number. Ah, it's uh, fifteen dot yes, three. Yes. It's Visual Studio two thousand seventeen. Yeah. Um, when you are Jenkins. But, uh, sorry, uh, we we don't uh, we don't actually ship anything if the Clang build is broken. Ah, okay. So that's, the that's Clang the, build is always clean. I see. Yeah. So you're, you're building it with both, but you're shipping mm -hmm. it with uh, yep. Visual Studio. We don't have any plans to uh, ship. I read a blog post about Chromium on Windows and their plans to uh, use uh, Clang on Windows to build. Uh, up until now, they used uh, Visual Studio Compiler to uh, build their uh, Windows flavor, and they plan to build it using LLVM on Windows. We don't have any plans uh, on that front. Okay. We're happy with our current tool set. We just need to Use the best of both worlds. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, when you use your Jenkins uh, on mm -hmm. a continuous integration server, um, how do you actually, what do you actually uh, do to build it? Are you uh, running your PowerShell script? Yeah. Uh, I can show, show it to you again. Here you go. The, the workflow is add the build step of type Windows PowerShell. That's okay. a plugin for Jenkins. Okay. It's a, it's a, maybe you already have it in your Jenkins box. Otherwise, it's in the Jenkins gallery. So add that PowerShell plugin. This is the one, PowerShell plugin. So add a build step of type Windows PowerShell <coughs> or just create another job. We have a different job. We have a Jenkins job for Clang builds. It's a separate job. But you can add it as a build step post your build, regular build in the same Jenkins job. And the script, here it is. Okay. Uh, I, this I, is our bootstrapper script. AI comes from advanced installer. It's not something with artificial intelligence or anything. <laughs> do, you, do, you build, do you build in Jenkins for production too with Visual yes. Studio? Uh, uh, for um, release candidates, uh, not for the actual uh, RTM or Goldmaster that we ship. Okay. I see, but I see. for uh, release candidates and QI, uh, QA testing, we build that in Jenkins as well. And, and was what, was uh, uh, make file or? Uh... No, uh, we actually use MS build files. MS build, okay. Visual Studio projects are basically MS build files. So okay. we, uh, as you saw this uh, Windows PowerShell uh, build action, there's a MS build. I think you can see it here. Uh, yeah, the second yes, one, the, the second, second one. That's an okay. MS build action. And you give it the project file and it builds it for you. Gotcha. So the last question. Um, I'm not using, unfortunately, a Clang Tidy here. And uh, um, my question is, if I want to replace uh, not the using or other regular statement, but uh, one function with another one, 
with, for example, I'm deprecating something. Yeah. So is it is it possible and uh, yes, how feasible it is? Yes, you have to build a custom lib tooling for that. Tidy doesn't do refactorings like that. Lib tooling. Lib tooling is a, a C++ library from LLVM. Yes. You build your custom tools on top of that and it exposes full AST and basically you can do anything. Um, Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. The session I, is over. Catch me. Can uh, I say one more thing? Yeah. There's a bunch of other Clang tools that are built on libtooling already. There's like yes. Clang rename that will rename variables across yes. your, your yes. project. And uh, there's, so there might be one that deletes a function. I'm not sure, but there's I, lots of refactoring tools. I wasn't tools. sure about the answer, but yeah. there are several tools. Uh, catch me in the hallways. If you have any more questions, I'll be here. I'll be happy to answer any of your, any of your questions. <laughs> <laughs>